I always thought macro pads were pretty cool, but I've never really had the opportunity to put one together or do like a DIY version for myself. When they announced the Raspberry Pi Pico, I thought this is a really good opportunity. Now I can actually make one for myself, put it all together and see if I would use it, how good they are, you know, how usable these things actually are. I've seen loads of people make custom ones with cases and all the Cherry MX key switches and you know, you have to solder the diodes and stuff. I thought I'll do it from a set today. So I got one from Pi Moroni, which uses the Raspberry Pi as the control, and then it has its own silicon, like surface mounted switches, just on a PCB. So I can see if I like it, if I would actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis. And then if I do, then I can obviously go on and make my own custom one with the Cherry MX, the blue switches, all them, kale, whatever, you know, all that sort of stuff. So as I said, I bought this set. There's only three things you need, the Pi, some header pins and then the set. So let's put it all together. We have to solder the pins onto the Raspberry Pi first, then we put it all together into the enclosure and maybe we'll print a box to go around it or something. So here's the bag from Pi Moroni. It's the Pico RGB keypad base. So it doesn't come with a Pico actually in the bag, but if we open it up, we can see all the stuff that it does come with. So. 4x4 four four silicon buttons, some hardware, some nails, not nails, got a top plate, the actual PCB itself. Oh, and some little uh, rubber feet as well. So as you can see, these are just little pressure mounted or surface mounted buttons for the silicon there. And then you've got the pin out for the Pico, which sits on top. All these break out into the individual pins as well, which is quite neat so you can see all the pins there break out so if you did want to use them for something else as well so if you had the keypad then you wanted to build something out on top you can always still use the pinouts here and they're all labeled for your convenience which is nice so first things first I'm gonna put the headers into the slots here so that I can line them up with the Pico and get them soldered on I've broken them in half so they're the right size for the Pico already. So that's one row. Put the other row on now. There we are, so the pins are coming out now. You can see that. And then we can just sit the Pico right on top there. Lovely, so I'll put some solder on there now. So after a bit of soldering, you can probably tell why I got a kit and didn't go straight for doing it myself, but hey, nevertheless, they're all connected, all working fine. One of the benefits of putting it on the board and then soldering it is you get your pins nice and straight. So if you were just holding them two pieces together, it'd be a bit difficult to try and get them straight, but as you can see now, they're in exactly the right place because I soldered them where they're meant to be. So, after a little bit of soldering, we've got it all fixed up. Now it's time to put the buttons on. So, got the Pico installed there, and the pins are all installed. Time for the buttons. So this button matrix got little uh, bits on the bottom. It's got little feet, so you can see those there. Those little feet, those just go into the holes on the PCB. So we just line those up. There and it fits on nice, nice snug fit. Then you've got this little cover plate that's got some markings on it. So it does say like letters and numbers, but I'm sure you can rename and change those. We'll have a look in a minute. So that just sits on the top there. And then we get our hardware. This little bag of bolts and nuts then just holds it all together. So this bolt then, they just go through the four holes on the base there. Oh. So there we go. It's all bolted together. Buttons feel quite nice actually. Kind of feels like a um, Blackberry buttons. Like squidgy kind of foam buttons if you think of it that way. Like the ones you have on like a Nokia. Like the button's kind of squishy. So there we go, that's the assembly. 
It looks pretty nice. It's a uh, soft, soft switches. They're basically silent because they're silicon. But I like it. It's a little handheld. You know, it's almost like a small calculator size. I like it. It says go to the website to get the software. There's obviously some sample code that they've made to work with the RGB, to work with the switches. So let's go over into the computer and we'll have a look at that. So here we go on the product page on Pi Moroni. This is the uh, Pico RGB keypad base. So this is where we'll be getting the example code for the Pi itself. If we go over to their example page, it takes you to the GitHub then here's the little sample code that we need. I just copied this into Thony, which is the software you need to program the Picos. And here's the result. So there you go. You can see this working. This is just the sample code pressed through every color. Every button changes the color of the button with the RGB on the background there. And then once you press them all then, just changes to the next color and keeps going through. So lovely, I'm gonna try and change this to a macro pad now, have a play around with the code, see if I can get the it to output as a keyboard to the uh, computer, and then see if I can get the lights to play around with it as well. So once we were done with that then, I went over to this blog article Raspberry Pi Pico and Pi Moroni RGB keypad, lots to say. And this was basically everything that we need here. So it goes through links to a couple of GitHubs and they'll all be linked below. He has a extra button that he's added on and a screen which allows you to change through the functionality so you can have multiple macros on, on the pad and you just change through the profile that you've got. Um, we're gonna stay away from that for today, but we just implement the base, you know, kind of config that he's got here running. So here we are on the GitHub. There's a lot of good stuff on here. Basically, he just explains it all in a couple of good steps. So if you're going to go and do it yourself, just go through there, it explains it better than I can. But there's config files and basically key configs that you just change your macros in for the ones that he has in the example code and it works straight away. This is also where I got the STL files for the 3D printed case, which we'll have a look at as well. All in all, it's pretty easy to follow and uh, the link will be in the description, shout out to him. So I did find a similar project where they did make a macro pad with this exact board here. So I got the code from that from GitHub, changed it up so I have my own macros, and now I'll show you what these macros do. So as you can see, we've got yellow, which opens Chrome, We've got purple that opens Premiere, orange that opens Blender, and then we've got green that opens PyCharm. These are the applications I use most often, so I thought having them on individual buttons would be pretty cool. Then we've got the corresponding keys for those, so Chrome I don't need any hotkeys for, but for Premiere I've got these programmed to particular keys in, in Premiere. We've got then the orange ones linked to keys in Blender. And then we've got the green one linked to keys in PyCharm or little macros that are nice to have. So I'll go on the computer now and I'll show you how it works. So as you can see here, if I press the yellow button, which is Chrome, it does a little search and then opens Chrome straight away. We can also do the same for Premiere. So if I do Premiere, it searches Premiere opens up Premiere straight away for me. We've got Blender, there's a little search for Blender, opens Blender up, and then the last one there, PyCharm. And that's the code that we were using to make this little system. So as you can see, it's very customizable what you can do with this macro pad. And you can basically get it to do anything you can get to with a keyboard. So you can do search, you can do multiple things. You can do space, command, control, alt, delete, all that sort of stuff. And commands after each other so you can have a whole list of things that you can do off one button press which is very powerful. Obviously I haven't had enough time to play around with it yet. I want to get my keys sorted out, see which ones I would use most often, see if I can get a couple of longer macros for things like I want to cut out that will just save me time in my process flow. But one thing I also want to try this with is games because when you have games you have lots of keys 
on PC gaming where you have to select different keys, you might have different effects or spells or something like that that you might have to press different keys for. Having them on a macro pad takes that away and you can have them all in one place where you can just easily swap between them. So that's something that you can try and I think I'll try out for myself. All the information for this, the GitHub's, the hardware, the software will all be just below that like button. Whilst I was doing my research, I did come across some STL files for a case for this. So they're just printing right now. Let's put them together and see how it looks. So they're all done printing. These are all the pieces that I need. This is the base or the bottom. We've then got the keypad area. There, so the Pico comes through this part here. And then a little top, which sits on top of the Pico there to cover it over. So as you can see, so it all fits together. So first things first, you get the Pico, there's little cutouts in there, you can see. So what we do is we slide this in, that just slides on like that, it's kind of held in place. The keypad bit then just goes on the top there sits and pushes over all the keys, pressure fit, there you go, and obviously you could just rock it like that with the Pico out, or you've got this little cover with the cut out there, and it just sits on top, and there we go, the final bit, kind of looks like a proper calculator now, you put a little black box on that bit, and it'll actually look like a proper calculator. Lovely back open, so you know, it's a Pico RGB keypad. But yeah, that case is um, pretty nice. So let me know in the comments section if you have a macro pad, if you use macro pads, what you use them for. If you've got any interest in macros, I mean on Mac, but I also use Windows. If you've got any interest in macros, please leave them down below in the comments. Hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.